Hello there, and welcome to a hybrid wedding day, wedding photography, and a highlight film, all from the Sony a7 IV. Oh, and tomorrow is the last day that you can get in on the Book More Weddings January 2024 launch special. So if you're interested in getting Book More Weddings with all of the bonuses at the craziest price I've ever offered, there's one more day to do it. And as always, a 100% money back guarantee, so there's nothing to lose. When I'm doing getting ready coverage at my clients' actual homes or their parents' homes, uh, I don't really love to show too much of the behind the scenes, but here's a, a little taste of how the video is looking and also a few of the photos. Moving into the ceremony, it's a bit of a challenge. So there's good light up the front, kinda, and there's good light exactly where I'm standing. All the guests are in a weird mix of light. Um, same with the reception space here, but fortunately by the time we get into the reception, it's not going to be this mixed light. It's gonna just be primarily incandescent and that makes me a little bit happier. Typically, if I was in any sort of environment like this, I would go in, I would turn all the lights off and I would shoot natural light only, and I would maybe dial up my ISO or just be a little bit more aware of the direction of light. But today, the overhead bulbs are kind of part of the decor, so uh, I'm leaving them on because they would look a little bit weird if they were not on. And this is all gonna look a little bit better once it gets a little bit darker. And I will shoot video clips for the hybrid video uh, here but I typically don't include too many details. It's, I would say, primarily for just having coverage in case my video ends up being a little bit short. Today, like always, I'm shooting a highlight film, so I'm not doing full coverage. I'm not setting up tripods for the ceremony. I am primarily a photographer first, but then also just getting video clips. I typically will deliver between a three to four minute highlight, and I feel like my couples are happy with that. And for the most part, it's all pretty much candid. So I have the Tamron 35 to 150, f2 to f2.8 on my camera here and this is an incredible candids lens so you can just zoom around the room and get all the shots you want without getting too close prior to this i was on primarily the 35 millimeter uh, gm for the sony a7 IV. i also have the a7r mark V in my bag um, which is theoretically a more powerful and better camera but I've discovered that the buffer, at least for hybrid coverage, uh, taking photos and switching to videos, just isn't as fast. So I find myself using the A7 IV a lot more than the A7R Mark V um, on wedding days with photo video. You can see Montana over there. She is my second photographer slash video person for the day. And uh, I also have, during a ceremony, I have my backup camera with me. So I actually have uh, on a strap here, my A7R Mark V, as well as the 20 millimeter F1.8. And that pretty much sits on my second camera body all day. It's just the just-in-case lens if things get a little bit too wide. Or in this case, if my main camera, if I have to do a battery pull or something, uh, I'm not going to do that during people walking down the aisle. I'm just going to switch cameras if there's a problem. I'm relying a lot on black and white today because uh, this is uh, some weird light. The GoPro actually cleans it up pretty well. Uh, the straight out of camera raw files, it's good light at the very end of the aisle, good light around here as long as you're looking at the window that's to my back but anywhere in the middle, it's uh, a little bit not so good. And especially when people stand up and the bride comes down the aisle. So yeah, black and white saves a lot of mixed lighting scenarios uh, such as this. At this point, I have Montana primarily shooting video because it is uh, I'm basically looking for like that pocket of light right there. And that's my photo. And because I'm doing that, I'm also getting her to shoot video of the same good light scenario. Uh, I will sometimes do this. Sometimes I'll just have them do regular photography and video clips. But today I figured it was a better case to make sure that we get the shots. So she is on video primarily and I am on photography, but I still will do some video clips like you see me doing right there. I've said it a ton of times uh, over on the main channel, but the Tamron 35 to 150 is an incredible. It is the best ceremony lens in my opinion. And for a lot of people, it's replaced two lenses. So I personally don't love a 24 to 70 and I've never really used one for weddings. Uh, I find that I prefer just having a 35 millimeter prime or a 50 millimeter prime and moving around a little bit, but it definitely replaced my 70 to 200, which used to be my go-to ceremony lens. But in a situation like this, it would be just like a little bit too tight. So I might've went with a 50 prime and I would have sacrificed some of the shots because a 50 would be a little bit too wide from way back here at the front of the aisle when uh, somebody's coming out that door there. So incredible ceremony lens, incredible candid lens, uh, this 35 to 150. Uh, Sam Yang makes one as well. Um, it's, I would say, equally as good optically. 
and the same yang version is a little bit less expensive as well. Um, maybe go look at a more comprehensive report, but I've used both of them and they feel very, very similar to me. The other benefit, I guess, for having a lens that zooms like this, uh, even a 24 to 70 or 7200 is helpful. Uh, for videos specifically, you need a few different shots that photography, you can kind of get away maybe a little bit by taking, the, if you're on a 50, you could take that shot and then you could move over here and take another shot with a 50 and it would be a little bit different. But for video to play kind of the same shot at the same distance several times in a row just doesn't really work. So it's very nice to have the shot at 35 and then at 150 and then I have my C2 button up at the top there set to uh, go into APS-C crop mode, which means this turns quickly into a lens that goes all the way to 225 millimeters and uh, I'm able to get a lot of versatility out of it. Um, I'll also mention the one uh, negative with Sony right now is if you're using either the a7 IV or the a7R Mark V or most of their cameras that I would use for a wedding actually, uh, you get 4K 60 crop. So I shoot everything in HD 60p. So I want my lenses basically to be the same. I find that if I'm shooting and I have 4K 60 enabled and I'm on a 35 to 150 and then as soon as I hit record, my lens jumps from 35 to something more like 50. As soon as I hit the record button, it's just, it's not so good. So uh, yeah, a7 IV, I still shoot regular HD, but everything is in such great focus that I don't really desire having 4K. Um, you have to be very aware of your crop, so you can't really crop into a regular HD frame, whereas if you're shooting 4K, you can reframe some things and maybe crop some things out in corners. You have to be very intentional and know that what you're shooting is going to be the final delivered product. Um, there's also, so I don't shoot with a mist filter, but also upscaling from HD to 4K for delivery kind of adds a little bit of that mist filter effect uh, so people aren't seeing themselves in super crisp detail, um, which might go against what <laughs> what we believe as photographers. We want all the detail, I want to see I want to see it all. But couples, that, that close up, if you can take a little bit of that, that crispy edge off, uh, I feel like everyone appreciates it. So now we're moving into the recessional and I, I feel like it's almost common practice now, it didn't used to be, that when the couple walks back down the aisle at you that they stop halfway and, and they have a little kiss, a little moment. And uh, that is a great photographic opportunity. Maybe talk to your couples either in the first meeting or on the wedding day to tell them like, hey, I'm gonna make you do this. And then when they're walking out, you just kind of get them to kiss. You can either just say kiss or you can kind of point it at one another and uh, usually I do it. So something like this is a very, very easy and I would say it's a better image overall than the first kiss. Uh, first kiss is, it's sometimes good, sometimes the officiants in the way. Um, you saw that my crop was a little bit weird uh, for their first kiss and it was because the officiant was she was like, I'm going to get out of the way. And then she moved kind of out of the way, but just stood in a more awkward spot than had she not moved at all. Um, I could have hit her behind the couple, but that's what you're doing when you're a wedding photographer. You're doing the best you can with what you're given. And today we were given pretty good conditions, I would say overall. All right, moving into family photos. Uh, this was kind of, I would say the best spot. So that taking into account the guest experience as well. Uh, there were a few people with mobility concerns, so I didn't want to take them to the park that's kind of across some train tracks. Uh, that didn't seem ideal. Here also, as you can see, from that direction, it kind of works. You have to be very conscious of where you place people because the shadow is coming in so directionally. So it is not the most ideal. I'm also using bounce flash off of kind of a gray ceiling and turning my flash intensity up. But the easier solution is to do this and to turn people to face towards the light so the people look way better. The background, it's a little bit weird that it's not completely square, but the lighting, in my opinion, is significantly better with that tiny little tweak. And um, I also shot this knowing that I had to edit out that exit sign that's behind there and the fire extinguisher in the door. So I was conscious to not include those unless I needed to, and bigger group shots, I kind of had to. But smaller group shots, I did not. Now let's go aside where things are a little bit easier for lighting. All right, if you want to look at each other for one or two there. Looks good. And you can kind of put both arms around each other as best you can. I think flowers work like that down. Sure. And then if you guys want to hold hands and slowly kind of just walk towards the, you don't have to actually go into the the weeds here but like up to the weeds and you can just look, look at each other there
That looks so good. Awesome. Can I get a little, uh... Good, yeah, that does look really nice. So I have a little bit of a shot list. Uh, if you're interested, I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, you can get my shot list as well as a small preset pack and uh, email templates and... One other bonus thing, I think a pricing template as well is in that kind of birthday bundle. And that's all free if you want it. Uh, link in the description for that. And usually my shot list kind of goes that I'll do individuals uh, with each side of the wedding party and each of the people in it as well as brothers and sisters or anyone that's there basically. Um, this is a new one for me. This isn't on any shot list that the girls are like, we're going to pick her up. And they did. So uh, it worked out 60%. But maybe for some great photos. So I'm I'm always welcome to entertain ideas. And I think that there's kind of a balance. So if you go in and you start controlling things, you got that shot list and you know that you need a photo of the bride side. And then you want a photo of each of her, her with each of the girls individually. And then you want a shot with her and her brother and her and her brother and the groom. And you get all the safe ones out of the way. It allows a little bit more time. Uh, you can also kind of gauge this if you've done one wedding. Maybe it's a little bit of a challenge to, to figure out how much time you actually need. But after three or four weddings, you kind of know that, OK, in decent lighting, I can get this section of the day done in 20 minutes. So you get all that done, you get all your safe shots, and then you encourage the more interesting and fun ones. If you kind of fumble around, and you're not quite sure what photo to go for next. There's a pretty good chance that someone from either, the, especially during family photos uh, or the bridal party will step in and they'll just start s setting up shots that maybe the couple doesn't want. So if you can take control right off the beginning and use that shot list and get all the shots done, um, you just kind of set that precedent that you know what you're doing. Uh, you don't need help in figuring this out. And then you have time to encourage just weird stuff. We were taking photos on a Frisbee golf course. so. Uh, we had to involve them because we were standing directly in the way of one of their uh, their frisbee golf holes. So here's something I've noticed: uh, my couples tend to be getting a little. Bit, they're they're having more fun on their wedding day, I think, than ever before. And I think that this might be because I'm more of an idiot on Instagram than I used to be. I used to basically only show serious work. And then I started doing, uh, I might not recommend this, so maybe I'll put a big asterisk next to this, that I started doing content both for as kind of this YouTube educator, human being, as well as a wedding photographer. And this is my real business. And I'm trying to find a blend of that, but it just, I, I guess I just create more comedy content uh, on Instagram and I tend to be attracting couples that are a little bit, or at least they're not completely turned off from the idea of their photographer uh, having a little bit of fun. So that's something I've noticed. I now put the 85 millimeter F1.8 on my camera and that is, I would say typically for most of the reception, I'm on this lens, including first dances, uh, absolutely including speeches. I don't really have anything. I have the 35 to 150, but in this environment, even the GoPro lights it up a little bit, but it's pretty dark overall. And even at that 150 end, I'm at F 2.8 and I would rather not be if possible. So the 85 1.8 is kind of my go-to for this. And again, that top button set to go into APS-C crop mode, which is not doing anything magical. It's just simply cropping in the camera. So you're not making that decision in post-production later. Here we are in good light. But so many distracting fire elements around that I've photoshopped out. I missed one. But, but then also there's a bathroom door. There's a toilet off to the very left of that frame, which is really annoying. So there's a lot of distractions on that uh, entrance. So don't stress yourself out if you're if you didn't do the best job ever at getting like nailing that entrance shot. Know that there's a lot of variables and that even I, I don't know. You do the best you can again. And sometimes you get some really good stuff, and sometimes that's a very challenging moment. I find that's the same with the ring exchange, that I never really get that out of the park incredible ring exchange photo, but you're doing that professional job that the image is there and it's nice enough. I think for me personally, I also, there's a, at least built in, I want to do good by the guest experience as well. So there are things that I won't do, like I won't set up a bunch of off camera lights, even if it's going to create a marginally better image, if it is going to be incredibly distracting for the guests. And that is just kind of my, my personal preference. I think that I operate as a wedding photographer, as the wedding photographer that if I was hiring someone that I would want them to behave like at the wedding day. I also do my best not to stand in front of people for too long. So if I do have to get in front of a family table to get a shot, like there's this weird pillar here. And if I have to be here, 
I basically go up for the first, I would say, 30 seconds of a speech because I know that that's going to be the most exciting, that they're going to make a bunch of different faces. Maybe they're going to laugh. Maybe they're going to be serious. And I can get that variety really quickly. And then I can get out of there and, and head to the back. So sunset session. We kind of timed this perfectly, actually. Uh, the sun is just peeking out over the building. And uh, we got some nice golden light. And yes, we are back out on the Frisbee golf course. I know for at least the highlight film that I'm making that I need a few good shots from this time of day. And typically uh, I'll go chronological for the entire wedding day and then I'll end it typically with some sunset uh, video clips. So something like this works okay, but what clip I really want is them kind of walking away from the camera. I feel like it's a very easy way to end a video. So. I'm always looking for that nice golden light ender. Uh, you can also end it, I would say, with the first dance with the couple as well. Um, there's usually a few clips in there that if you don't get a sunset session or if it's just overcast all day and everything looks the same as what you shot at two in the afternoon, I will typically end it on the first dance in that case. Also a drone shot, you can open with a drone shot, close with a drone shot. Um, I feel like it adds that level of quality. Um, I use one of the, the DJI Mavic, uh, the minis now. And I got one with the screen and the controller for the first time, and I love it. So even though it's, it's, you just put your phone in the controller if you get one without the screen, uh, I found that it's just like a little bit annoying and it slows me down. And typically on a wedding day, it takes enough out of your day um, to even just fly a drone. And to remove maybe two minutes from that process, uh, I don't know, it just helps me out. Makes it a better experience overall as well. And I know it's not super fun to fly drones anymore. It was fun for a minute, but now it's just kind of work. And I find that it just lets me do the work better and faster and uh, get it done and get it on the SD card and get it back home. That's how, that's how data works. I will also, so um, I'm shooting a lot of black and white in photos, but I can't really mix in black and white video clips. So I'm shooting everything. I actually uh, set a custom Calvin balance because it wasn't it wasn't one of the incandescents, but typically what I'll do is I'll just set my camera to incandescent mode and it's usually pretty close. Uh, the rest of the day, I will pretty much always be shooting completely just on shade mode. And uh, I like that color palette and I come back into post-production, I add my LUT to it and usually at between 50 to 70% um, transparency. And I am pretty happy with that look overall. Book more weddings, crazy deal. That was a hard stop to the music. Book more weddings, crazy deal, ending tomorrow. January 12th, 2024, and it's at a price that will never come back because it's absolutely crazy. And as always, a 100% money back guarantee. If you get it, it's not what you're expecting. Send me an email and I will send your money back. Link down below if you're interested, or you can watch more on the screen right here.